welcome to the Victorious Living Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Nakia Young. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We have a very, very special guest with us, and that is none other than the lovely Tara Carissa. Hi! Hi! How are you today? Thank you so very much for having me. To God be the glory. Truly honored by the invitation. Oh, thank you so much for being here, and I am blessed and highly favored. I'm excited about this discussion. So for people who are not aware or who have never heard of Tara Carissa, I just, who is Tara Carissa? Yeah, most people know me as a female preacher, women's empowerment speaker, to mm-hmm. God be the glory, traveled all over the world doing that. I've coached women now in over 25 countries. And so most people would know me for sure as a preacher, empowerment speaker, life coach. Mm, got it. Awesome. And you guys need to follow her on all her pages. We'll get into how to connect with her later. But one of the reasons I asked her here today, and we're, as you guys know, we're dedicating this whole season to surviving narcissistic abuse. And it comes in various forms. But she has a site that is called successbullying.us. And I stumbled up on this site, y'all, and it has blessed me so much. So tell us, what is success bullying? Success bullying is when people can see that you're thriving, you're doing well, and they hate it. They are jealous Mm. of it. And so they do everything in their power to try to diminish what they perceive as glory that's attached to your success. So putting out rumors, putting out lies, gossiping, uh, putting out nasty innuendos, insinuations, Mm -hmm based on how they think you may have achieved your success, but it's rooted in jealousy because there's no proof to their accusations. It's just anger that is your success and not theirs. Mm, Very good. And so you don't have to be famous. You don't have to be uh, some big hotshot Fortune 500 company owner, any of that. You can be a regular, regular, schmegular person and experience success bullying. Absolutely, because it's rooted in jealousy, and jealousy is a spirit, and spirits are no respecter of persons. Mm, mm. So what is something that you would tell someone who is experiencing success bullying? What is one of the first things you would tell them to do about it? I would tell them to rejoice, because one thing about someone Mm. who is bullying you is they are going to help expose the weak links in your camp. They are going to expose who's willing to listen to what they have to say about you. And they are also going to expose who's willing to stand up for you. And this is valuable information that you will need for your next level. Because I am a firm believer that whenever God is in the middle of elevating you, he first sends in a purification. He first sends in Mm -hmm. something that exposes what could potentially be snakes around you so that when you are elevated to your next level, you don't take a snake with you. And so I would say rejoice. The second thing I would say is do not internalize anything that someone who is jealous of you is saying. If you can keep the water outside of the ship, the ship won't sink. Hmm. See, the difference between a ship that's floating and a ship that's sinking is the water that got in. And Hmm. you have to discipline yourself to say, I'm not allowing that filth, mess, foolishness, childishness, jealousy. I'm not allowing that in my heart, my mind, my spirit. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know what God has for me. I know where I am going. And to sit here and tune in with negativity, Mm. that's not going to get me to where I'm going. And so I will not pay attention. Man, listen, listen. I want you guys to understand what this woman just said right there. Because right there, that was a lot. A lot of what happens with the success bullying, they really want to get into your head and make you think that something is wrong with you. Mm -hmm. They can't just come out and say, "Mm, okay, you got me. I'm jealous. Like Mm -hmm. they're never going to do that. So Mm -hmm. the trick is to get you to think, oh my God, it must be, is it something wrong with me? Is it something I did? Like, And on top of that, the trick is also to get you to act out of character. Mm. You cannot stop people from lying on you, but Mm -hmm. you can stop yourself from being who they say you are. Mm -hmm. And so here's the beauty about a thing called time. If your enemies spend all of their time saying, she's pink, she's pink, she's pink, the the sky is purple, orange, or green, (laughs) eventually people are going to start, no, that's not what I see. Now they may look when they first hear the lie, but the more they begin to pay attention to you or whatever your enemies are trying to say, 
And they begin to realize that there is a difference in what they are saying and who you are presenting as. Mm -hmm. That begins to discredit them. So mm -hmm. another tip I would give to anybody that's under fire is to keep living. Keep living. Because time is your best friend when people are spreading lies, gossip, and rumors. It exposes them and elevates you. Amen. Amen and amen. So let's talk about uh, some ways that you can deal with it from a spiritual aspect with regards to not being embittered or not walking in unforgiveness, because that's another big trick. If Satan can get you in unforgiveness, then he got a foothold. So what are some things you can do to kind of keep that from happening? You have to stand firm on this. All things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. Not the things that you like, not just the things that you love, not just the things that you enjoy, but all things work together. And so you can guard your heart from unforgiveness by seeking God and asking God, how is this working for me? Because that verse ends by saying, according to his purpose. So if God is allowing this, there must be a purpose attached. So God, what is the purpose? And when you become purpose-minded, as Rick Warren would say, when you become purpose driven, you're not bitter because you understand that what the enemy is meaning for evil, God is using it for good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Being purpose minded. I like that because yes, there is nothing new under the sun. God is not surprised by the attacks that people are doing. It's not like, oh, I didn't see and that. And understand mm -hmm. that on the backside of the attack, it's exposing your enemies. It's discrediting yeah. your enemies. When people find out that you are not who they said that you were, guess who's discredited? Mm -hmm. And so you've got to learn how to be grateful that God is using your enemy to be an enemy to themselves. Mm -hmm. I just said something right there. Yes. Because we <laughs> serve a God who specializes in giving us victory with no blood on our hands. Mm -hmm. What better way than an enemy to discredit themselves by saying things about you that you know are not true. Other people who know you know it's not true. People who work with you know it's not true. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to see the beauty in your enemies going to battle with themselves, thinking they're going to battle against you. Ooh. I say it so often and I stand on it. Don't outdo you trying to outdo me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I have always said, uh, I talked to my husband about this earlier and I said, the energy that goes into jealousy, it's really like the most unnecessary, unuseful energy when you think about it, because all the energy they're putting into trying to stop you, they could be using to try and to start themselves. Or, Absolutely. You know. And so you realize that they are literally planting seeds against themselves. The Bible says, do not be deceived. In other words, don't let anybody tell you anything differently. God is not mocked for whatever a man soweth, that will he reap. This is why Jesus says, pray for your enemies, because your adversaries, your enemies will think that they are planting seeds against you when they don't even realize they're planting seeds against themselves because every seed has a harvest that must come to pass. And yeah. so you have to pray for them because the devil is deceiving them into thinking that they're coming up against you when they're really coming up against themselves. Hmm. That's true. That is very true. Now, this is something that I wanted to ask, what about people who are not really sure that they're going through success bullying? They know that something's happening, but they don't really have, they haven't come across this specific term to define it. So they're really just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. What are some signs that you could be facing success bullying? If you are successful, if you just won an award, if you're rising in notoriety, if good things are happening for you and as good things are happening for you, you're beginning to hear people insinuate negative things about you or she didn't really do that or he didn't really do that or that's not who she really is or they begin to try to question or discredit who <laughs> it's obvious that you are. They try to discredit what you've done or even in some cases, they're trying to take credit for what you have done. Mm -hmm. You might be surprised the number of women that I have coached who had degrees, awards, expertise before getting married. They got married, went through a bitter divorce, and the ex-husband began trying to take credit for the very essence of who this mm -hmm. woman was. That's yeah. a form of success bullying. Mm -hmm. And so anytime you are winning in your career, but paying a price 
from people close to you or people in your vicinity or people in your industry or people that are antagonizing you and trying to say negative, nasty things about you, but yet they're working real hard to try to get somewhere. You must know that that is a form of success bullying because they want success for themselves, but yet they're attacking the success that they see you have for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Now, this is something that happens in women's groups a lot. It's not as painfully obvious because they do success bullying by way of exclusion. That's a big one that I see. They're not going to do the obvious stuff, but, you know, when certain things come up, they're just going to not include you. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Well, so far as people excluding you, I think that that is a blessing because when you (laughs) are excluded, it gives you a sense of not isolation, but watch this. It gives you a sense of value Hmm. because valuable things are not easily accessed. Valuable people are not everywhere. Valuable people aren't invited and show up to everything. And so again, what they mean for evil, God is using to increase your value. Hmm. When people are beginning to exclude you from where they are, Go build an audience and a community where they're not. Mm. Because the reality of it is, is you don't want to be around people that your enemies have access to anyway. In Genesis 26, every single time that Isaac built a well, his enemies attacked that well. And so he kept moving and kept moving and kept moving. And eventually he got to his Rehoboth, which was the place where the enemy could touch him not. And so I stopped by to tell somebody listening in that if they are excluding you, rejoice Mm. and go build your audience, your community, your support system somewhere else, but build it with people that they can't reach. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Y'all see why I wanted to have her on here. We can't talk about this topic without giving people these tools. Now you're welcome. Now you talked about something very key in what you just said, where he kept moving to where they couldn't tear up. Mm -hmm. Uh, his wells. And you talk about that on your page a lot. So kind of give us some more insight on how to not always announce your next move, something, how you worded it to kind of keep the devil from tearing up what you're doing. Well, the devil is not all knowing. The devil is not all all knowing and neither are his workers. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes people know what to tear up because you're talking. But Mm -hmm. when you get quiet, They don't know what to attack because they don't know what you're working on. Listen, I have degrees with an S. I have licenses. I have certifications. I have trainings that I don't advertise. What is necessary for my ministry audience to know about my certifications, my licenses there? I talk about that, but I don't talk about my licensing and my degrees and certifications and training in other areas that has nothing to do with my ministry audience. Because if I ever get attacked in ministry, and I have been attacked in ministry, Mm -hmm. if I ever get attacked in ministry, people will have to wonder, how is she still moving? How is she still Mm -hmm. going? We thought that we attacked her there. Well, you attacked me here, but you didn't know about there. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And this is why even when you go back to Genesis 1, the Garden of Eden had multiple streams that fed it. In order to stay alive and survive any attack, you have to have multiple streams, multiple sources, multiple Mm -hmm. contacts. You have to have things that everybody does not know about. There is privacy. There is security. There is victory and secrecy. Mm. Victory and secrecy. Y'all hear that? You got to believe it. Y'all hear that? So she talks about on her page also confidential marriage licenses. Did you guys know you can get a marriage license and nobody have to know about it? Nobody knows about it. Nobody can look it up. You can do it in four states in the United States, but I highly recommend California as with California, it's the easiest process. And I tell people you can have your wedding anywhere, but get your license in California. And a confidential marriage license is not about hiding. You don't duck and dodge from anybody. But Mm -hmm. what it does is that it fortifies your relationship in a way that the people who never run into you also Mm -hmm. can't look you up. In other words, what I'm saying is you ought to live a life in such a way. You ought to visit places and frequent places that your enemies don't know about. So it decreases Mm -hmm. their chances of running into you. All right. So if they never run into you to find out who you're married to, they also should not have the option of being able to look up who you're married to, because you will have people that are so envious of your life. They are determined to interfere. And if they can find out the who, they'll go look them up on social media, send them nasty messages, 
whatever the case may be. And so again, it's not about fear. It's about wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's not about hiding. It's about privacy. And it is about fortifying your relationship. And I highly recommend that for celebrities. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend that for well-known people. I just uh, officiated a wedding for a very well-known C, let's just say a a C-level executive for a well-known company in the United States. And she went that route because she said, in my industry, people will try to destroy your private life in Mm -hmm. hopes that it will destroy your public persona. Hmm. Okay. So you have to understand. Now, everybody doesn't need this. All right. But for the people who need it, embrace what you need. In John 7, Jesus is flat out asked, are you going to the festival? Jesus said no. And then when everybody else went to the festival, he went. Did Jesus lie or was Jesus operating in strategy? Well, Jesus tells you, essentially, he was operating in strategy. Why? Because the world does not hate you. The world hates me. When you know who you are, when you know what you carry, you've got to move differently than anybody and everybody else. So what's a sign that you're anointed when you can't move like everybody else? So don't feel bad when you've got to do things to protect yourself, your legacy, your destiny, your call, your assignment that it looks like other people are not having to do. Mm -hmm. Now, here's one last question I want to ask before we get off. This is so good. (laughs) But I want to ask, why do you think that most churches aren't talking about this stuff? They may talk about it a little bit, but a lot of, I had to dig to find material on this. A lot of this is not talked about from the pulpit as much. We just hear we're supposed to forgive 70 times seven. And, you know, people don't know how to set boundaries because they're not really given a lot of tools about this in church. I wonder why that is, or why do you think that is? Well, from my perspective, uh, my educational experience, my credentials, my licensing and training, I can tell you that most pastors have an MD or perhaps a doctorate from an unaccredited university. And I'm not going to get into if your pastor or preacher should have gone to an accredited university or not. That is a personal decision. People go where they feel like they want to go. But yeah. as it relates to an MD, if you must understand that if your pastor or religious leader has an MD, that's a master in divinity. You're not taught boundaries in divinity. You're taught scripture in divinity. Mm -hmm. And so the reason why you're not hearing it from the pulpit is because that's not the expertise of most pastors. Mm -hmm. This is why I tell people there's nothing wrong with allowing someone to speak into your life. God can use anybody. But when it comes to wisdom, you need to get with people who are certified and credentialed in the area that you need help. Yes, I do believe in the power of laying hands, but I also believe in going to a surgeon if you need surgery. Mm -hmm. I also believe in going to an attorney if you need a a courtroom situation rectified. I also believe in going to an accountant for your financial help, all right? So it is with boundaries and when you're facing psychological warfare, because that's really what success bullying is. It's psychological warfare. You need to meet and speak with people who are credentialed and saved and understand what they're talking about, not just from a spiritual perspective, but from a clinical perspective. And this is why early on, I would bring on people like Dr. Tamar Bryant, who is saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, but is a psychologist who can take you to scripture and information. Yes. Because both of those are key to defeating the enemy. Both of those are key. And all thy getting, get not an opinion, get an understanding. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I hope you guys are taking notes on this because you have to get an understanding. Okay. You got to know what you're up against. And that is very, very key. Thank you so much. Oh my God, the time went by so fast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. Now, if people want to get in contact with you, how can they connect with you? And what do you have going on? What do you have coming up that people may want to plug into? You know what? Head to my website, Tara, T-E-R-A, Carissa, C-A-R-I-S-S-A dot com. You can also head to my success bullying website, Mm -hmm. www.successbullying.com. Everybody says U.S. and that's what it is. But I chose U.S. because that also stands for us, because Mm -hmm. I want you to know that you are not alone. You can also check out my website, ilovemytestimony.com, spelled all the way out, because I want you to be encouraged and I want you to know 
that you are more than a conqueror. And there are other people who have been through tough situations that have come out on the other side of this thing called life and they are walking in victory and you can too. God bless. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much, Tara. You guys go follow everything she just said. And mm-hmm. you get, you have a prayer call that you do? I do. Now okay. you need to text LIVE, L-I-V-E, to 833-677-0216. I send out encouragement. I'd say you when I'm preaching and prophesying live. So again, you need to text LIVE, L-I-V-E, to 833-266. No, not 266. <laughs> phone number. My phone number is 833-677-0216. There we go. All right. So you guys heard it there first. If you need some prayer, you want to hop on live, get some more of this encouragement from all over the globe. Yes. Thank you so much. And you guys, thank you for tuning in. And that's been another episode of Victorious Living Solutions. I'm your host, Nakia Young. Keep living victoriously. Bye, everybody. 